Stuart Sykes, ladies and gentlemen, friends. Hello. 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 I'm Julian, as Carl's just pointed out, Laura's dad. Before I proceed, sadly, I have to go through a few formalities. Um, actually, Apple and some case facts will do this. It's called health and safety. <laughs> Those of you that have actually suffered one of my speeches before will be aware that they tend to go on and on and on and on and on. Therefore, the staff will be coming around offering you pillows to put on the tables to rest your head. Other members of the staff you'll notice will be walking around with big sticks. Don't be frightened of those, but I should warn you that they are prodding sticks and anyone found to actually be asleep will be prodded in the ribs. Anyone heard to be snoring, of course, will be ejected. <coughs> well, this truly is uh, a historic day. The 8th of December will always be remembered for three world-famous events. On the 8th of December in 1733, the first recorded UFO, unidentified flying object, was reported actually in Dorset. I wonder how many will be reported tonight when you not leave. <laughs> <laughs> On the 8th of December 1968, the first live transmissions were received back on Earth from the, Ap the Apollo astronauts searching the Earth. But more important than any of these two events is the fact that on the 8th of December 2007, James married Laura. <coughs> James, on behalf of Nikki and I, it gives me the greatest pleasure to actually formally welcome you into our family. I'll also take this opportunity to welcome Jim, James's father here today, and thank him for his help in today. To welcome Peg, James's grand, and indeed all of James's family and friends that are here. I would also extend that welcome to all of our family and friends that have come today to actually help us celebrate what really is a very important day for Laura and James. I've now lost my place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who did shuffle these cards? James. <laughs> now then, Laura and James, I know that some months ago, in fact about 18 months ago, both Nikki and I did suggest that you should elope and get married on a beach somewhere. <laughs> However, you didn't, and we're here today. And what I would like to say is how glad you didn't take our advice and that you are here today. Because as far as I'm concerned, and I know as far as Nikki is concerned, and I hope the rest of you, this really has been a truly wonderful wedding day. So thank you for not alluding. On the, uh, on the run-up to this, uh, this wedding, several people said to me, this must be really easy for you. This is, you know, your third daughter that's got married. You know, you know. Well, actually, perhaps arrangement side, yes, it's been easy. But, but I have to say, emotionally, it's probably been the hardest of the world. After all, you know, Laura is our little baby. She's the last one of our three beautiful daughters to leave the nest. 
So it has been very hard. Every dad knows that, that one day, sooner or later, his daughter will end up finding the right man. And they'll get married. Every dad also wishes his daughter the very best of luck in finding that right man. One that will make her happy beyond belief. And when the time comes, and this actually happens, all a dad can really do is observe and hope the very best for her. And today that's my role. And I know that Laura has chosen the right man. One of my fears as a parent was that my daughter may make wrong decisions in life. Marrying, for instance, for the wrong reasons could be one of those wrong decisions. But knowing James as I now do, I couldn't have chosen anyone more suitable to marry our Laura. Simply for the way he treats Laura and the way that I know he makes her feel. So James, I thank you for that. Do you know, <laughs> it's Christmas time, isn't it? it? It only seems like yesterday, but uh, it was probably just after Christmas, maybe Boxing Day, Laura was playing with one of her first tea sets. <laughs> and, and I said to her, darling, what are, you, what are you doing? She said, oh, Daddy, I'm washing the dishes. And I said, oh, that's, that's lovely. And she said, I said, what else are you doing? She said, oh, well, I'm drying them as well because I'm not married yet. <laughs> now, our little Laura here was never really destined to follow in her two elder sisters' footprints, footsteps, should I say, uh, in the nursing profession. This actually became abundantly clear to Nikki and I several years ago when uh, uh, Hannah cut her finger badly. <laughs> Laura, uh, Nikki and I should point out, we're, we're not bad parents, we actually at work. But uh, Laura quite rightly ran around to next door and, and got Mo, who was then our neighbour, and Mo rushed round to assist. <coughs> However, it wasn't Law, sorry, it wasn't Hannah that she ended up assisting, it was Laura, because Laura had to go and lie down <laughs> at the sight of all that blood. <laughs> what I can say though is that Laura is very much her own woman. She has set up a very, very successful soft furnishing business that goes from strength to strength. And both Nikki and I are so very proud of all her achievements. If someone was to ask me to describe Laura, I would have absolutely no difficulty at all in doing that. I would probably say, Laura's kind, she's generous, she'll do anything for you. This year in particular, she's been a fantastic help to me, recovering from two operations, and uh, she was a great support to Victoria, who sadly is not here. Yes, she is. Uh, at the early arrival of Lottie, our granddaughter. Laura, she's artistic, she's meticulous in her attention to detail. And of course she loves animals. Loves animals, well that reminds me of something else actually. Um, yeah, loving animals, or Laura's love for animals, has actually got Grandpa into a, a little bit of trouble a little while ago. He, he'd come up to help us with the garden one day and was quietly dispatching a few snails with his foot. <laughs> Unfortunately for Grandpa, Laura caught him. Grandpa, what on earth are you doing? They are God's creatures after all. I really could go on and on describing Laura, I guess as any dad could on, on a moment like this. This is a difficult bit. I, I guess what I'm really trying to say, but in the very simplest of terms possible, is that Nikki and I just love Laura a bit. When I was giving Laura away today, you know, I have to be honest with you, I, I did feel 
a, 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 quite a tremendous loss. After all, I was giving our baby away to be married. But when I reached the altar, that, that feeling suddenly changed. And I have to be honest, it took me a little while to work out what it was. But, it, but finally it did dawn on me what was happening. And the feeling that I was then experiencing was one of joy and complete happiness. And that, and that happiness and joy was caused by the fact that I was actually giving our daughter away and she was happy. Happier than I'd ever seen her before in her life. Darling, you look absolutely stunning today. And I'm sure everyone here would agree with that. We know where you get your looks from. You're not going to cry. Anyway, James, I know that you know how lucky you are. Please take good care of her. We entrust her to you. Now James, as I'm sure many of you know, is actually a very confident builder. Uh, in fact, indeed, over the last couple of years, he's doubled the size of uh, his house and has actually made uh, an absolutely beautiful home at which to take his new bride home to. So James, you should be really proud of all that you've achieved in that house. It you know, really is marvellous. So congratulations on that. James also has many hidden talents. Now those of you that know James may know some of them. You may not know all of them. Some of them may even come as a surprise to you. One came as a surprise to me. James is actually an accomplished exorcist. Honestly, he really is. Every time he comes to our house, he rids it of spirits. <laughs> Before I say too much more, there's, there's one person here that I really must thank. Um, I'm actually looking, oh, she's hidden over there, Wendy. Yeah. Wendy, you, you've helped Nikki with the flowers yet again. She's done it three times now. Uh, and please, can I ask you all to just put your hands together and thank Wendy. And really thank Nikki, because, you know, what they've done with these flowers has been fantastic. So if you could just put your hands together. Now, now's the risky bit of my speech. If I may be so bold, I'd actually like the, the happy couple to share a little bit of intimacy with us. So, Laura, could I ask you to just place your right hand on the table in front of you, please? And, James, could you place your right hand on top of Laura's? That's perfect. Now, James, I want you to really savour this moment. Okay? I want you to remember this moment always. This being the few fleeting moments that you actually had the other hand. <laughs> anyway, I told you it was going to go on and on. I told a great big walking dog, so I've almost come to the end. I would, however, just before I finish, like to give Laura and James, if I may be so bold, a little bit of advice on marriage. And basically, there are no challenges in marriage that cannot be overcome by three three-word sentences. And these are, I was wrong, you were right, I love you. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, I have come to the end now. And this is actually the bit that I've really been looking forward to. And that is to uh, say that it is now my greatest privilege to give you the first toast this evening. And that toast is to my daughter Andrew, or my new son in law, should I say, your new husband. So please be upstanding and raise your glasses and join me in the to wish the bride and groom every happiness. I'll give you the bride and groom.
now also the next thing that I should be doing. And that is, at this point, I should be asking James to speak. However, at, at one of my other son in laws weddings, he couldn't quite manage it because he had too much to drink. So Ian has actually said that he would stand in for James. <laughs> Some of you have travelled a little way to come and see us, and the weather's not been great, but thank you all for coming. Um, Laura and I will, sorry, Laura and I would like, I got you Laura and I would like to thank you all for coming. Um, we hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. Um, it's been an absolute uh, lovely day. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for your kind wishes, uh, cards, and presents that you've sent to us. Um, Julian. Um, I remember the day that I uh, finally plucked up the courage to ask Julian for Laura's hand in marriage. I was going to talk about that. It took me about two weeks to actually get to the point where I had a quiet moment with Julian and uh, I felt the moment was right. Uh, I thought I'd gone through all the scenarios of, of what he was going to say, maybe a little wind up or two here and there, but I wasn't prepared for exactly what he had uh, said to me when I did ask him. Um, he actually said that it would be a, a great honour for him to give me Laura's hand in marriage, um, which was a total shock, and I do thank you again for going easy on me. <laughs> Laura, don't look to say. You look amazing today. Um, I've got all this written down, but I actually can't see a thing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> You look absolutely wonderful today, and I'm, I'm so lucky, so lucky. And anybody that knows Laura will know why I'm lucky. Um, she's kind, funny, generous, caring, all the things that Julian has said. Um, and she's always been there to support me, love me, and she's my best friend. Um, I know that our future is going to be a happy one, so you know I don't, I don't even have to worry about that. There's no that's how it's going to be. Let's come. Uh, I'd like to thank Julian and, and Nicola um, for, for everything they've done for me um, and for us on this day. It's going to be totally unforgettable. Um, it's been wonderful, and I, I really appreciate everything you've done for us. Um, I also want to thank you for your love and acceptance into your family. Um, both, both Nick and Julian are, are loving, generous, caring, and I, I feel very proud to be able to say that I'm your son-in-law now. Um, and I'll always do my best to live up to your expectations and promise to take care of your Um, the whole day has been absolutely amazing and I know it's made both of us feel very, very special. And I'm sure everybody will agree that, that this has been an absolutely fantastic day. So, uh, thank you very much. Now, we have got some gifts, but I don't know if they've not been the tree. So, um, I don't know if there's anybody that... Brian's bouquet's on his way, okay. We have, we have some other get, uh, gifts, but uh, there seems to be nobody around to uh, retrieve it. Uh, so at this point, I would have liked to have given you a gift, but they're not here. I'll carry on. Um, uh, I'm going to say a special thank you to Nicola now and um, her dear friends, Wendy, uh, Bunty and Jackie, who I've spent many hours in uh, in a freezing cold garage, which is probably why Nicholas not feeling 100% today. Um, producing these wonderful flowers uh, that we have at the church and here, 
Um, um, Nicola, I'm glad to say now you can finally hang up your gloves and secateurs. Um, so thank you very, very much for all, all that you've done. And you, Wendy, I know you're here. I know the others aren't here, but uh, thank you very much. Um, okay, moving on to the other side of the family. My dad. Um, I'd like to thank you uh, for your support in the build-up to our wedding um, and supporting me over the last 30 years. Um, he has told me that life is, 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 that life is only as good as you make it. Um, so I, I feel with Laura by my side that uh, I've already got a head start. Um, he's also given me the, the confidence, knowledge and guidance to, to make my own way in life. So I thank you for that. Uh, and now I'd give you a gift. But... <laughs> Yours is an extra. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Drinks it too, so. um, I'd also like to thank my mum. Um, as many of you know, she passed away several years ago. Um, she would have absolutely loved today. Uh, and I know she would have loved to have Laura as her daughter in law. Um, she was very, very fond of Laura. Um, she was a, a loving, caring person, and I know we all miss her dearly. Um, so I'd like to join you to join me in a toast to my mum. Today, I know at one point that they were um, they were once uh, debating how to get Laura down that uh, very puddly driveway to the church. Uh, I know they went through many options, uh, and I think they went for the divert around the puddles. Um, I'd like to thank them for agreeing to be our ushers today, um, like they had a choice. <laughs> Um, and doing a great job. I know that you know they've been rushing around all over the place, making our life a lot easier and you know, making us not stressed out. So that was great. Thank you very much. Um, brings me to my best man, Carl. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to thank him fully, by the way, uh, as he hasn't quite finished his duties yet. So uh, I'll leave the, the final. Bit, but, um, I'd like to thank him for, for what he's already done for me. Um, yeah, great tag do, but we won't talk about that. Uh, making sure I got back on my feet, etc, etc. Um, and for being a great friend to, to me and Laura. Um, he's always there, I always know that I can depend on Carl if I need to. He's always there and, you know, both me and Laura are very grateful for your friendship and your kindness. And he's so nice as well. Um, Carl does have a slight medical condition that most of you might not know about. Um, when he's under extreme pressure, he tends to lie a lot, so anything that he says. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Carl. So, uh, <laughs> 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 I think I'm going uh, to draw to an end. 
And um, I'd like to propose a toast to Laura, my wife, um, my new parents, my in laws, Julia and Nicola, um, the friends and family that have joined us here today. I'd just like to, to propose a toast to all of you for coming and spending your day with us. Um, and it's been great. Thank you very much. Um, and at this point, I'd hand you, I'd like to hand you over to Carl. Thank you very much. Before I start my... Um, I've got a couple of things I need to address you from behind the Fantastic day, I think everyone would agree. It's been a fantastic wedding ceremony. Alistair, absolutely amazing. Um, and of course, we have a very, very beautiful bride and a very, very handsome groom. And it's unusual for the best man to do this, but I actually want to propose another toast. And so, if I like you all keep standing. James and Laura. James and Laura. Laura. I see the way they've exposed me. I don't have a table to hide behind. Um, one of the nice things about being a best man is I get to um, thank the bridesmaids, the toast bridesmaids, and um, both Hannah and Tori along with Melissa and, and all of them. They've all looked absolutely perfect today. And they've made it very, very special indeed. And as you all know by now, we were to have some gifts to give out. <laughs> I don't have those either. Um, but we will, we can, once again, be upstanding to toast the bridesmaids. Ladies and gentlemen, bridesmaids and bridesmaids. Best man. 
name, which I found out by drawing around Googling a lot, was that in times of old, when men didn't quite fancy any girl in their village, what they'd do is they'd go off to another village and forcibly kidnap the girl they actually fancied in the neighbouring village. And to do that, they actually had to have a henchman. And that became the best man. And his, his other job was to then protect the group at the wedding from the bride's family. Who <laughs> 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 turned up to try and steal her back. <laughs> from my point of view, well, the best man, from my point of view, is it's all about a different sort of catch. And what, what I want to show is, let me show you a picture. About two years ago, I took James uh, fishing to British Columbia. And we went fishing for sturgeon and salmon in the Fraser River. This is the first time James had been out there. And um, this, is a, this is a picture of, you, of James here. You can see it at the back. It's a very small picture. It's, a, it's quite a small fish. Um, <laughs> but, but not bad for the groom. First time, first time ever. I thought that uh, James, myself, stupid beard. <laughs> the best man, however, oh, this is my friend. <laughs> That's the boat behind my fish. <laughs> <laughs> this is the rope we tied to the boat and the fish towed us back. <laughs> That's what he caught it with. <laughs> I want to say, um, and everybody else has no quite right, I want to say how absolutely breathtaking your looks today. I can imagine that any single man in the room Laura at the moment thinking there's there, there's real beauty that comes away and then you're right. And James, I can imagine that at the moment the any single woman will be looking at James right at the moment, looking at him right now, breathing a sigh of He was a liar, James. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. Seriously, James, every inch today, the dashing and handsome group. And not many of you know this, but we know this because we've watched James suffer a very, very strict dietary regime. Every month, in order that he can make the most of the photo opportunities. And um, this has caused consternation to his sister Emma, who likes to see James well fed. And obviously, they're flying off to New York. And Emma's insisted today that I turn up with a couple of gifts for James and I've given to her. These are the gifts we do have. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I've got a couple of gifts for James just for the flight to, to uh, New York and then. And um, there's two ready salted in there, not me to give those to Laura if you like. <laughs> and, um, Pack of mini rolls, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the Tesco finest low calorie mini melt and Mowbray outdoor bread pork pies. Finally, an apple. Thank you very much. <laughs> So, what do we know about James? We know, we know a few things, and then we enlist a bit of help again here. What we do know, you can help, all help me here in a minute, but um, we know that James is very, very cute as a child. <laughs> <laughs> can we do this better? Can we do one, two, three? Oh. One, two, three. Oh. Oh. <laughs> if you look carefully, you can see a point developing. <laughs> James has been a marvellous son, apart from a few worrying teenage years on a very powerful motorbike, which uh, I'm kind of indulging in. And I know James has spoken about his mum Pat briefly earlier on. And there's a 
picture of Pat over here. Obviously, I knew Pat very well. And I think all those that knew Pat would say that she was a very caring and loving mother who wanted the very, very best for her children. And I know that, that James loved his mother with all his being. And I just want to say that this is one of those days that Pat would love to be here today to see James setting off with such a marvellous bride as he's, he's got. We also know, and again this was mentioned by Julian, Julian by the way, this is a remarkable man. Yeah, I think. This is a man that can have an entire hit run of hit replacement and then be back in the pub in time for last night. <laughs> 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 James is, a, as Julia said, a, a very skilled builder, and the skills that, that James learned come mainly from his father, Jim. He learned a great deal of skill. Oh, no, <laughs> That's the only true bit in the whole speech, <laughs> apart from the so, And we, James learned all his skills, I said, from Jim. And again, like, here, here's a picture of James learning the most important skills being a master builder from his father Jim. This is this is um, <laughs> this is Jim and this is James on the roof of an unfinished house drinking tea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, completely unfinished. This is their own house by the way. <laughs> it took them about a decade to build. <laughs> and right at the end they overcharged themselves. <laughs> <laughs> We also know another thing about James. We know that he loves animals, and there's a that we know this very specifically because James loves this animal. Oh. <laughs> this is a life-size picture. Of <laughs> 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 the literature of the travel is equivalent to Cujo. I don't know if anyone knows that film. Um, this, is, this is Boris. This is the size of the rope they need to tie him up. <laughs> This is, I don't know, this is a piece of somebody's car or <laughs> 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 um, Anybody who's been to James and Laura's house has probably made love to Boris. <laughs> we know that James also is a very considerable grandson, and I'm sure that Peg here will attest to that. And he's equally considerate and loving as a brother through his sisters, Emma and Zoe, and he's almost faultless as a man. Almost. I say almost faultless. Hello, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> almost faultless as a because he still has that annoying trait of arriving just around your kid's bedtime, winding them up into a state of hysteria, <laughs> and then leaving as prickly as he can. <laughs> <laughs> now, now they're married, I'm really looking forward to paying this favour back. <laughs> I'm sure that Nicky and Julian will say that they always think of James very well, and I'm sure they'll say that he's going to be a fantastic son as well, and also very handy around the house. So. Yeah. <laughs> Most importantly, the thing we all know is that James is very, very much in love with Laura, and he's completely committed to her. And of course, as we also know, James needs to stay very committed to Laura because Laura makes curtains and she has a room full of very big and very large scissors. <laughs> <laughs> but, of all this we know about James, every man has his dark corners. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great laugh, though, isn't it? <laughs> I have to be tied to a chair with a laugh like that. <laughs> and for months now, James has been planning a trip took a lot of honeymoon to New York. And he's been planning for winter, he wants it to be snowy, and he's been on the he's been on the internet every single day checking the weather forecast for New York, making sure it's going to be snowy. It's going to be snowy, he says Carl. Today we didn't use them, but we were going to have snow machines in the church so that we'd all have a flurry of snow for that winter feeling. Something organised by James. He said it was for Laura but it was something organised by James. <laughs> and we thought about this, and we think that James has got some, some of his own reasons to be so interested in snow. And I just want to, this might explain. <laughs> 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 this, is, this is James in a 
rather compromising position with a headless snow. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, I think you need to know that. It's an honest choice, Jim. Uh, let's see, that's what Photoshop does for you. <laughs> In times gone by, the best mum used to read telegrams, and we used to have, we used to have those. We used to, to read out the well messages from well wishers to the telegrams, and we don't really have those. But however, it's on this rare occasion, in modern times, I've got three here. I've got one. So I'd like, if I can, to just run through these for you. Laura and James, it's from your grand peg. Wish you all the best for one another. And they're very strange now. I don't really know why, but James, I've got a letter here from the Inland Revenue. <laughs> 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 I, I, I don't know if it's anything to do with your thing. I'm pretty sure what it is. To be honest, um, two CD ROMs, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs>